Hey y'all, coaching the fight here. Got Stacy with me. Shalom. And we're talking about Passover and the different stuff that we do on Passover. Mm -hmm. Last night we started this conversation when I told you that there was actually three parts to what we do on Passover. Yeah, mind you, it was 1 a.m. Yeah, well, we waited till now to do the class. 10 a.m. And we're talking about the first part, which is the roasted lamb. That's what Moses was talking about. Right. Yeah, I remember um, they, every year from the Exodus, the time of the Exodus, the children of Israel would have roasted a lamb on Passover. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. That was part of the um, tradition and the thing they did as according to the law. Mm -hmm. Then when the Messiah came, he actually seemingly changed it to bread and wine. Right. Because he did away with the whole sacrificing of the lamb, right? Okay. He stood in as the lamb. So, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that um, they would have been um, con still doing the lamb at the time that he walked the earth, right? Yeah, and actually still doing it even till today. There's many people now who are preparing a lamb, including us, for Passover. The thing about it is what it symbolizes. Yeah. When the when it was first instituted, um, it had a it it represented the forgiveness of our sins every year but then when the messiah came it no longer represented he, since he stood in as the lamb even though somebody may uh, dispatch or sacrifice a lamb for passover that's not actually what that lamb does for him anymore mm -hmm. right because um the messiah gave his blood so it so the purification or the remission of the sins changed from the lamb's blood to the Messiah's blood or the wine at Passover. Yeah, he was the, um, I guess we would say the, the final lamb offering. Was he the final lamb offering? Because now that we're going into the third era, there seems to be another change. In other words, it's changed again from bread and wine, and that's what we're talking about in this class, the third thing that it is. Well, when I say that he was the final lamb offering, I'm speaking of the, um, the animal. Oh, the animal sacrifice. Yes. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. sacrifices went away with him. That's why, you know, sacrifices aren't that big a deal nowadays. But think about it, people still enjoy that uh, roasted lamb every year. We do, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know that it'll ever go away like the uh, bread and the wine. I don't know that they'll ever go away. But like we said, that's how this class all started. It's we said, I'm saying that actually Passover consists of all three. It okay. consists of the roasted lamb mm -hmm. as well as the bread and the wine. And even this new element that we're going to talk a little bit about in this class. Okay. Well, just to give a little bit of scriptural text to go with this, we're going to look in the book called the Third Testament of the Bible, and we're going to pull out seven verses. All right. You said you wanted to give us class seven minutes, so we pulled out seven verses to talk about in this class. Okay. We'll let you read them. This one is coming out of chapter 8 and verse 52. 8 and 52. Many times have I said that you and those are the same ones. Come to taste the wine again and eat of the bread at my table. Eat of the lamb. He is the origin of life. Come, you who hunger, thirst, and unclean. Be strengthened and eat your fill. For then I will say to you, pick up your cross and follow me. So this Passover celebration is a big deal. It's always been a big deal. It's the main thing that went on when they were getting ready to leave uh, Egypt. And even in today's time, when we are expecting the marriage supper, that's what we're actually thinking about is Passover. Mm -hmm. So this is what the Father, so this is what the Messiah is talking about when he says, Come, you who hunger, thirst, and are unclean, and be strengthened, and eat your fill. He's, he's talking about partaking in this marriage supper. Yes. Okay, now the next slide comes out of chapter 4, if you would read that. I come to give you the same doctrine, the teaching of love, 
The banquet to which I invite you is spiritual, as are also the bread and the wine. For today, like yesterday, and as always, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're starting to get a little hint here that something is changing in the third era, and it shouldn't be any surprise at all, is that the sustenance of the Passover is now a spiritual thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was the flesh of an animal. Yes. Then it changed to the symbology of the wine. Mm -hmm. And now it's changing to a spiritual nature. Right. Something that we can't see at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. But notice right there where he goes on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Still making us understand that he is connected to whatever this sacrifice is on Passover. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, next we're going to jump down to verse 31 out of chapter 14 of the Third Testament. There is joy in the hearts of these multitudes. They know that a spiritual banquet has been prepared for their spirits where the divine master awaits to give them the spiritual food and drink, the bread and the wine of the true life. Again, here we're hearing hints that there is a change in what the sustenance is for Passover and it's pointing to something of a spiritual nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? He's even calling it a spiritual banquet here. Yeah. So the marriage supper will be of a spiritual nature. Yes. Prepared for their spirits where the master awaits to give them spiritual food and drink. The bread and the wine of true life. Mm-hmm. So if the the lamb, the animal, represented the flesh, um, and it was back in the days during the uh, first covenant, and uh, the bread and wine, the second covenant, being as far as the Messiah, this third covenant that we are in or about to go into is the spiritual part of it right spiritual that's okay. that's right like like uh, we heard like we read about over in the gospel where he was saying there's coming a day when we will worship in spirit and in truth well we're at the cusp of that new era and part of what we'll go through is this transition from the bread and the wine unto this new spiritual food of that he's referring to as the bread and wine of true life okay All right, so the next slide we'll look at is coming out of chapter 63, his verse 154. Oh, humanity, you who have never known how to value my word and have never wished to sit at the table of the Lord because it has seemed too humble, my table nonetheless still awaits you with the bread and wine for your spirit. Yeah, so this is talking about our participation in this marriage supper throughout the years. Mm-hmm. Sitting at the table. Yeah, even though it has changed and was once a fleshly animal and changing into wine, it's still talking about how we have been lacking to participate in that marriage supper. Right. Because what does it say? It seemed too humble? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we rather have the pomp and the grandeur right. of the religions than the simple communion festival that the father was talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. So the next verse will be out of chapter 11, verse 102. If I took the bread and wine, it was to make you understand that they were like the love that is the substance and life of the spirit. And if I told you, do this in memory of me, the master wished to tell you to love your brothers with a love like that of the Messiah, giving yourselves as the true sustenance of humanity. So here is the meat of this class here. Here is actually what we're talking about. This is the sustenance of the era going forward. This is that spiritual food that he's talking about. Do you see it? Love? Is that what you're Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Understand that they were like the love that is the sustenance of life of the spirit. Okay. So whereas before we were partaking in the material bread and the material wine, now what he's talking about is loving our brother. Mm -hmm. 
and he says do this in memory of me and when he said to do this in memory of him what the master was talking about was to love our brothers with a love like that of the Messiah giving ourselves the true sustenance of humanity so this third era sustenance is going to look more like love or something like that towards humanity okay all right. The next verse we'll look at is in chapter 14, verse 35. If my sacrifice of the second era abolished the sacrifice of innocent victims whom you emanate, laid it upon the altar of Jehovah, today the substance of my divine word has made you cease to represent my body and my blood with the bread and wine of this world. See, what he's saying here is that we no longer represent his blood, his body with the bread and the wine like we did in the second era. So that's not saying that we should discontinue doing it, right? No, you don't discontinue doing it just like you don't discontinue eating a lamb. I right. mean, you got to eat something anyway. You don't say, okay, since we got a Messiah, we're just going to eat hamburger or chicken nuggets on the Passover. You know, if you still have lamb available, you'll still eat it. It's just that you're not representing the Messiah with that lamb anymore. Well, the same way with the bread and the wine. You still got to eat something and wine is still good. You'll still partake in the bread and the wine. The difference is now is that it's just a material sustenance. It's not a it's not the representation of the Christ's body or his blood anymore. Hmm. It's just kind of more like just the tradition of what you would actually eat during that time. It's not a representation as it used to be okay mm -hmm. the representation now that he's talking about is love for our brother yeah mm -hmm. like we like we saw in the next in the last slide all right the next slide we'll look at is also in chapter 14 is verse 33 in this new time you will only find that nourishment in the divine essence of my word if you seek my body and my blood, you must seek it in the divine things that I have created, because I am all spirit. Eat of this bread and drink of this wine, but also fill my chalice, for I want to drink with you. I thirst for your love. So, there you have it. You have this new element of the Passover, this third aspect of the Passover which is, like we said, is of a spiritual nature. It, it points towards the wine part, points towards the blood, towards the charity and the love that we will share towards mankind. And the bread part, which used to represent his word, is now actually the word, particularly this third testament that we're talking about here in combination with the Old Testament and the New. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to remember back when the disciples first started drinking this wine and eating this bread, the word of God was not available to them as it is for us today. Mm -hmm. And so this is what it's talking about now that we have not only the Old Testament and the New Testament readily available for us in hard copy, but we also have the Third Testament of the Bible, which is the spirit and truth as promised. And so now we have a complete picture of what the elements of the Passover look like. You have all three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It seems as if all there is a steady progression where all material um, things are slowly disappearing and bringing us into the light of um, all things spiritual. But I do have a question. Okay. My question is... Um, going back to where the Messiah says that I will not partake of this wine until I drink it with you. Um, I think he said, if I'm not mistaken, the New Jerusalem or the New Kingdom. The New Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that actually talking about the actual drinking of the liquid wine? I mean, is it talking about uh, the love? What is what? That would be talking about the spiritual have. aspect of it. There would be no need or it would be physically impossible for him to come down and drink wine with each of us. But spiritually, he is actually already prepared for the marriage supper. He's kind of just waiting for us to show up. Right. So this is a spiritual wine that he's talking about as he awaits for us to 
drink of it with him. And as he said, for us to fill his cup as to say that he's ready when we are. Right. Mm-hmm. I think, that, you know, um, it's always been about love from the beginning of um, Genesis 1 to the last verse in the Revelations and throughout the uh, other sacred writings that it always has been about love. And, you know, love is something that we can't see. It's something that we can't touch or smell. It's a spiritual thing. So it definitely makes sense to me about how, like I said, we're steadily progressing out of the material things and uh, turning into uh, the spiritual things. And then you also think about how love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. We read that in the scriptures. So that by doing charity for our brothers actually washes away or counsels out sins that we've committed previously. You understand that, right? Yeah. I mean, that goes along with um, uh, remission of sins. It goes along with repentance. And it goes along with, you know, the whole Passover theme, I would say. So it's, but it, Canceling and, out. And so it's easy to make the connection between the love that we will share with our brothers that's counseling out our sin and the wine that has been the representation of the counseling of our sin. It's easy to see how they are the same thing. Yeah, the blood. Mm-hmm. The, the doing of charitable deeds represents the wine that the disciples were drinking. Mm-hmm. So now we have a complete package on what it is that we'll do on Passover. Not only will we eat of the roasted lamb with the bitter herbs, drinking a little bit of wine and eating bread and the unleavened bread, along with the word of God and the charity for our loved ones. There you have the complete package. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should have. And like we said, I believe, I personally believe that it takes all three. Lord willing, I will be consuming all three elements of the Passover supper. Do you have a lamb? Yeah, as far as I know, I got a lamb and something happened to him. What what lamb you got? That little black one walking around. Mm. Mm. What's wrong with him? I don't know, he's too little. We got, we got to find out another lamb. Yeah. Wow. Coach trying to eat up all our little lambs. The time they pop out, he's ready to start chomping on them. He won't even give them a name but food. Dinner. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one big one out there is rough enough. You'd imagine if we had two or three hard-headed rams walking around. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. With that, we're going to close it out. Shalom. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.